All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, we've got a really exciting webinar for you here today. We're going to be talking about creating a cloud data lake for a trillion dollar organization. And if, um, if I can start off uh, with some, some quick introductions, uh, I'm Robert Maben with Dremio, and I'm the director of professional services here at Dremio. And I'm responsible uh, for a uh, team of field engineers uh, focused on getting our customers successful uh, with Dremio uh, quickly. And uh, with us today, we have a couple of uh, really interesting uh, and exciting speakers uh, and presenters. We've got Dong Hua, uh, Dong Hua Kim, and he is the Director of Application Engineering at New Wave. Uh, and New Wave is one of the premier technology partners for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, known as CMS. He's also currently the lead technical architect implementing next generation enterprise data management platforms using cutting edge technologies, which include Dremio, Azure, Databricks, Looker, and Snowflake. He's got over 19 years of IT experience with IBM, Lehman Brothers, JP Morgan Chase, and FINRA. And he also oversees New Wave's data science and data engineering practices. Uh, and he's gonna be taking us through um, a, a use case um, an implementation of um, using Dremio as the data lake engine um, for a customer. And we also have, joining us, we have Jeff King, and he's the senior program manager at Microsoft on the Azure storage team and owns the, uh, the big data and analytics partner ecosystem for Azure storage. Um, he's spent the last nine months or so onboarding over 20 ISPs on ADLS Gen 2, uh, and he's currently working on a bespoke program to bring the best tooling, cloud platform, and SI expertise together to create a winning data lake migration experience for those customers who are poised to embark on their hybrid or cloud and or cloud journey. So I'm uh, very excited to have both Donghua and Kim, uh, Donghua Kim and Jeff with us today. Um, and let me begin uh, first. Let's talk about uh, how you can um, how you can ask questions. So. You'll notice at the bottom uh, of your, of your uh, Zoom interface, the screen there, there are three little icons. One is the chat icon, one is uh, raise your hand, and the third one is Q&A. And just to keep things orderly and, and kind of flowing well, uh, we'd prefer that you ask your questions in the Q&A area. Um, and let's, let's kind of leave those other two options uh, untouched for today. That'll let us keep a smooth flow when we uh, take in your questions and when we go to, to respond to them. Um, and one other point to note is that if we don't get to your question today, um, then we'll, we'll do follow up. You'll, you'll, we'll actually follow up with, with an answer. We'll have someone reach out to you with, uh, with answers to all your questions. So feel free to ask. And if we, if we miss your question, no problem. We'll get back to you with an answer. So just rest assured that, uh, even if we run out of time, we'll, we'll get, we'll get back to you. So, um, so let me begin just and quickly introduce, uh, Dremio as a company. Uh, tell you a little bit about us. Uh, we were founded back in 2015, um, a little over four years ago now. We were in Stealth for a couple of years, and we uh, we came out of Stealth and released Dremio 1.0 in, in 2017. And Dremio is is really focused on being the data lake engine, and we'll talk a bit more about what that means. Uh, and I think when you see the um, the presentations. Uh, from Dong Hua and from Jeff, you'll really understand more of what we mean by that. And I'll introduce it briefly, uh, and we'll save the, the meat of that for later in the presentation. Companies headquartered in Santa Clara, California, and we've got companies um, that are using Dremio that, that really cross a broad uh, spectrum of, of industries, verticals, uh, different sizes. We've got some really, really big customers. Um, you know, some that are in the Fortune 100 uh, that are using Dremio for their, for their data lake initiatives. Uh, a few notable ones um, are NCR um, in Atlanta. We've got New York Life. Uh, we've got Microsoft, TransUnion. Um, and then we also have um, some great customers in, in EMEA as well. We've got uh, DB Cargo in Germany. We've got UBS. So uh, we're really crossing a lot of geographies and a lot of, uh, a lot of verticals here. Uh, with with the product, so so really the the problem that Dremio is is focused on solving uh, is uh, 
how, how do we make data that's in a data lake um, queryable directly by, by analysts and, and data scientists? How do we get the data out of the data lake, ideally directly? So we have a, a lot of um, our customers, and I think generally there are a lot of data lake initiatives uh, where people are, are bringing up uh, data lakes in cloud storage, uh, such as Azure ADLS, they may have data lakes uh, that they uh, have built out at Hadoop. They may have both. Uh, and the reality is, is that this data is really difficult to query, right? So it's it, typically you have to go through some, some machinations to, to get the data out of the lake. So uh, there are solutions to do this. Um, you know, if you try to query directly on something like Hadoop, you, you would use Hive or some sort of a solution like that. Uh, I think if you, uh, think about typically all of the components that have to be put between data that's sitting out in, say, a cloud store uh, and actual uh, end users of that data that might be using Tableau, they might be using Power BI, um, or maybe they're on the data science side, they're using you know, R or Jupyter Notebooks, or even just writing SQL queries. Typically, there's a lot of movement that has to happen and a lot of components that introduce a lot of complexity into the picture. When you think about having to load data uh, into either a data mart or a warehouse, right? So, so data is in the lake and maybe a CSV or a JSON or a parquet format. Um, and so typically there's, there's a lot of components in the middle where we've got to go load and transform the data into a warehouse. Maybe we have to uh, also, for further acceleration, we have to create cubes or something on top of that. We may have to create extracts in, uh, in something like Tableau or Power BI. Um, to, to, to make that um, workload actually be interactive from a, from a dashboarding or analysis perspective. Um, and so what we do um, here at Dremio is as the data lake engine, we give you the ability to basically sit directly on top of data lake storage and we give you lightning fast queries directly against your data lake. So if, if you have files on ADLS, if you have, uh, you know, files in, in some other, uh, you know, cloud or, or backend data lake like a Hadoop cluster, Dremio sits right on top and we give you lightning fast queries on that data lake. We give you the ability to build a self-service semantic layer um, that's really not so much like an ETL tool or something that you'd be used to with, you know, building cubes or something. We allow you to go directly at that data and then through a process of building up uh, what we call virtual data sets that can refer to one another, you can create semantic meaning from your data and then publish that to your end users very, very easily. Um, and there's no need to load the data. So, um, you know, we, we can basically go, go after the data directly where it lives uh, and you don't have to actually make copies of the data and load it and go through all of that pain to get it into uh, the tools that you would prefer to consume it in. And one of the important things as well to note is that um, we, we use open file formats. Um, and so there's really no vendor lock-in. You're not loading your data into Dremio. Dremio is actually using the data where it lives and that can be in open formats like Parquet, like uh, even CSV. So there's no vendor lock-in here. And when your data is already in your, uh, your data lake or your cloud store, you can go after it with other tools. So, you know, you could also run Spark jobs against the data or uh, any of these other tools that you might be using against your cloud store. Uh, and the last piece that's really important is that in addition to being able to query your data lake directly, uh, we allow you to join other relational sources and non-relational sources into the, the queries in the semantic layer that you're, that you're building inside Dremio. So if you do have legacy relational data warehouses, if you've got other relational stores, if you have NoSQL stores, uh, Dremio has connectors that can connect to those data sources and actually allow you to write queries that span both your lake and those, those uh, traditional relational sources very seamlessly and transparently to the user. So I think that uh, with that quick overview, what I'd like to do is um, hand it over to Jeff King, uh, who will take you through um, some, of the, some of the features and the, uh, and the benefits of the Azure platform. Hey, thank, thanks, Robert. Uh, good, good morning, Aaron, and good evening, everyone else. Uh, yeah, really, really happy to be on, and 
on this webinar and, and really excited about working with uh, Dremio and, and New Wave. I've uh, been, uh, been working with both of them and uh, as uh, along some very interesting uh, scenarios and customer journeys and, and <laughs> really excited uh, what we're going to be doing ahead in the next you know, 12 to 18 months. So uh, let, me, let me just kind of dive into uh, the concept of the modern data estate. Um, you know, and let's start thinking about this a little bit more. It's almost like a modernizing data estate in, in the sense that it's, it's a work in progress, right? You know, we're, the industry is at this precipice where cloud has become mainstream or specifically the uh, cloud native cap capabilities for big data and analytics uh, have become more uh, mainstream. And, and, and given some of the industry signals with some of the, uh, you know, big names and consolidation of, of various Hadoop based platforms, that sort of, uh, that is also becoming a catalyst for, you know, uh, what we're seeing is to be a, a pretty sizable wave, even at the near horizon of, inter of enterprises looking at cloud uh, in the next six to 12 months and they're saying, hey, Microsoft, how do you help me get into the cloud and really take advantage of everything that you have to offer? Um, <clears throat> so we have that conversation and, and with each customer and, and you know, their, their journey is, you know, is their journey and it's similar. I mean, you know, it's, there, there are some similarities, but it's also unique. But nevertheless, this, this notion of a modern data estate is where you're gonna have, you know, existing uh, on-prem and perhaps even traditional resources uh, either uh, integrating directly with a cloud, um, a, a modernized cloud native uh, capability to, to um, you know, ex that cloud native service now existing to either give the business competitive advantage or it could be a cost reduction. There are many reasons why there, uh, why, you know, why someone would pick cloud, but the architecture and sort of the mindset is, okay, we're gonna have uh, multiple data sources uh, performing uh, cross-cutting capabilities, serving uh, similar and disparate business organizations, and we just need to make sure we wrangle and make sense of it all. Um, and, and, and so we have, we have a couple of, uh, so let's actually talk about a data lake, actually. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So we're going to dive into this a little bit more. Uh, and this is actually why it's a little, really exciting for Dremio, uh, talking to Dremio. Can, can we go to the next slide, please? I can't see. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, what makes a great data lake? Real quick, it's, it's scalable, it's cheap, it's performant in the sense that it's purpose built for analytics workloads. Uh, it provides enterprise level security, uh, all, you know, that has granularity all the way down to the file or folder uh, level. And yes, I am using, I intentionally saying file and folder and not say object. Uh, like you would otherwise think of like a blob store and S3, those are object storage. Uh, and, and you'll see your ADLS Gen 2 is not really an object storage. Um, <clears throat> but a great data lake is supposed to understand files, file system, semantics, POSIX, uh, ACLs, and so on. Uh, and then cutting cr across the data lake, I mean, any successful data lake implementation in an organization, you know, like the whole notion of a data lake, you're going to have a bunch of data, some of it's, un, you know, unstructured and raw, uh, some of it's processed and ready to be ingested into your data warehouse uh, uh, of choice. Uh, nevertheless, you need, to, you know, you're going to need to have some visibility of the life cycle of that data, uh, you know, for, for, you know, various reasons, all most of them operational or security in nature. Uh, and, you know, you're going to want to have some of taxonomy and just be able to organize and make that data accessible. And so you'll have some data governance uh, strategy and, and various tooling to support that strategy, kind of cross-cutting uh, the, these capabilities. All right, next slide. Let's talk about ADLS Gen 2. Uh, so ADLS Gen 2, yeah, it scales like the dickens. It is, <laughs> we will, there is no amount of data that we will not support. Um, I really will take personal bets on that. Uh, it is secure because it is backed up by Azure Active Directory. Uh, and if you're, and if we think about that modern data estate, uh, the vast majority of customers today uh, use Active Directory as their local LDAP or on-prem LDAP solution. So 
guess what? Azure Active Directory has a synchronization capability that called AAD Connect that allows you to synchronize and, and um, keep all of your identities and that whole security layer intact. And you need that, right? You're going to need that as you, uh, as you enter into that hybrid, into hybrid land. Uh, so yeah, it's fast. It's, it supports atomic transactions and acid transactions out the gate. Uh, it is strongly consistent, unlike some other object storage uh, cap um, systems out there that uh, require extra tooling and therefore cost and per, per taxes as a, uh, accompanying with that in order to get strong consistency. And, and, and those who are running Hadoop native data lakes on prem uh, understand that the, you know you need strong consistency. You need acid transactions. And guess what? NG ADLS Gen two supports that out the box. Uh, we really do want data lakes. The whole notion of a data lake to 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 truly take root and flourish within within the Azure cloud uh, ecosystem and, and customer base. And what do I mean by that? democratize data access. You do not require to, we will not force you to have a specific engine or environment uh, in order to just access your data. You should be able to access your data any way you, uh, any way you see fit. And we allow that by, uh, by having different protocols and, and, and different APIs to support that. And it, it is cheap, it's cost effective. It's the same store, same cost, to as blobs to to uh, to store that data uh, and and just to cover a little bit of extra cogs on our side there is like a, a small uptick in just the transaction cost but if anyone's seen the Azure transaction cost pricing uh, you can get a lot for very very little uh, all right go ahead next slide I'm just kind of skim through some of this other stuff here so the whole notion let's talk about the architecture for a quick uh, the the architecture we uh, when you think think about how do I get data into and out of ADLS? Uh, you've got two APIs to choose from. You've got the, uh, the, the native, you know, ADLS native API, uh, which uh, is also, we also sometimes call the DFS API. That's gonna understand all of these sort of file system semantics that is um, part of Gen 2. If, uh, but there are some parts in your whole workload that don't need file system semantics, right? Uh, I'm thinking a lot about the sort of at the ingestion point, you know, if you think about all of the different data sources and all that, you know, wherever they're coming from, some structured, some unstructured, IoT, whatever, they're just, they just, you just need a place to land that data. Uh, so guess you don't need the AWS API necessarily for that. You can just continue rolling along with the Blob API, which the vast majority of everyone uh, already integrates with. Um, so sitting on so, sort of the so it, Gentoo sits on top of Blob storage in it, from a sort of service capability, which is great because now you get all of the uh, rich features and that rich feature set of Blob storage that has been built over a decade. Uh, you get that for free with Gen 2, which is great, right? You got, you know, various replication strategies, whether it's local zone or geo redundant, uh, you get that for free now in Gen 2. Um, you know, all of those, blob, there's a whole bunch of Blob features. I encourage you to check them out. Um, you get that with Gen 2. Now, sitting on top of that is the hierarchical file system. And long story short, this is what gives you the file system semantics. This is what gives you file and folder capability. This is what gives you asset transactions, even when you're doing something as benign uh, as a rename. Next slide. Uh, real, just a summary about Gen 2. Put all your data in one place give you multiple places, you multiple ways to access it in multiple environments, both inside Hadoop and outside Hadoop. Uh, the, we have a very rich partner ecosystem, first and third party alike. Uh, it's, and that sort of commoditized and cloud economic model, you know, you pay for what you use, per, pure OpEx, no CapEx. Uh, we should, you know, be pretty, pretty familiar with that. And real quick, I'm just to round this out with the, um, go to the next slide, please round this out with um, the ecosystem. Ne next slide, please. Thank you. All right, so here uh, are a lot, but not all of the partners that I've been working with in the past, say, eight to 10 months uh, to onboard. 
Uh, as you can imagine, there there's a, there are actually a bunch more Azure services, but I just, just don't have enough space. Uh, I really actually wanted to focus on sort of the third party and ISV solutions here. And so we have a bunch of partners that across the board. And as you see Dreamy over there in the bottom right, uh, you know, just a little insight for those. Uh, we were actually, you know, it's interesting how, how would I bucketize Dremio and sometimes I call them a data virtualiza virtualizer, but to me that seems so 2008 because they're a heck of a lot more. So right now I'm calling them a data lake wrangler. Uh, they, they do a hell of a lot of uh, uh, things and as you'll hear about in, in the rest of this, in the rest of this webinar. Uh, so they provide querying and so on and, and, and governance, but you know, we, we Gen2, we've got a vast ecosystem and I'm continuing to onboard more and more partners. Uh, so by all means, if you got any questions about any of these partners or any, anyone else that you don't have, you may have questions on, uh, by all means, just give me a ring, you know, uh, find me on LinkedIn. And I think that's it. Thanks. All right, Jeff, thank you so much. Um, what we'd like to do now is, is go ahead and, and uh, bring on Dong Wok Kim uh, and, and have him walk us through uh, an actual uh, use case um, that he's worked on uh, with Dremio. So with that, Dong Wok. Yeah, thanks Rob. Um, so, um, you know, thanks everyone for joining this webinar. Um, today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about how we are leveraging uh, Dremio and uh, Microsoft Azure services, including uh, ADLS at Gen2, which we're really excited to provide a service for our uh, one of our Federal Health uh, 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 Government uh, Health uh, uh, customer. So as you can see on the screen, uh, these are some of the customers that we're serving, uh, CMS, um, uh, HHS, NOAA, and FEMA and CDC. And as you can see, uh, most of our customers are very uh, healthcare centric. Next slide, please. So just to talk a little bit about New Wave, we are a mid-sized uh, business. We have about 400 employees. We do 11 prime contracts in CMS, supporting their seven um, centers. Uh, and I'm really proud to say that we are CMMI level four, both for both our services and uh, development. So uh, that's, I mean, I know that there are only a few other companies out there who has achieved that kind of status. Uh, and uh, you can see some of the, uh, you know, contract vehicles in the screen. Next slide, please. And these are some of our technology uh, partners. Uh, we are working closely with, uh, as you can imagine, Dremio and Microsoft. They have been really supportive of our initiative um, for uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the customer that I'm going to be talking about today. And then uh, we leverage, uh, 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 more innovative, I mean, innovative tools such as Databricks, Looker, and Snowflake as well. Next slide, please. So our customer is uh, very unique in the way that uh, they oversee many uh, federal healthcare programs, uh, including those that uh, involve health information technology. Um, they are the ones who uh, govern this space. So, and then you know they have there are many different programs within. Um, um, the, um, the agency uh, providing healthcare for whole spectrum of U.S. population. Uh, uh, next slide, please. We'll, we'll go over uh, more about our customers uh, challenges. So uh, some of the challenges that our customer is facing, um, they have a lot of data. Uh, they store, they analyze, and they uh, disseminate a large amount of data and they need to integrate uh, from different type of data sources, uh, including administrative, transactional, and medical records of the beneficiaries. And uh, they host information for about, over about 100 million uh, beneficiaries or 100 million population, U.S. population. Uh, they collect over 2 billion data points per year in just one of their programs. So as you can imagine, they have very large data they need, that they need to manage. So since they are in a uh, healthcare space, um, security is uh, a big must. Uh, it's not an option, but it's a must. Uh, they contain PHI and PII information. Um, and the challenges that they're having is that, you know, providing secure mechanism of storing patients information, but at the same time, they must not lose uh, data agility so that they can provide better services 
uh, to their um, uh, constituents or citizens uh, by leveraging uh, information that they have locked in their data. So that's a constant challenge that they're facing. And because they have different centers and they have different organizations, um, having a centralized view of uh, data uh, that are available in multiple systems is a constant challenge for them. And we will cover how we can leverage uh, tools such as Streamio and Data Lake uh, to work on, work on that uh, problem. Next slide, please. So the objective, uh, our objective uh, for serving our customer is, you know, to provide simple and reliable technology. Um, uh, so we need to, I mean, I think we covered uh, some of this, uh, center-wide shared data services, and then providing robust data governance that um, uh, provides both a data agility and security at the same time, and then leveraging uh, cloud neighbor architecture so that they uh, have a scalability and an agility that cloud uh, services can bring. Next slide, please. So I just want to put this slide uh, up here just to you know reflect on you know what system integrators must do. Um, you know we are not here to just uh, make uh, a system for uh, you know just leveraging innovative ideas, but the solution at the end of the day must be usable by our customers. It must be simple, yet it must uh, uh, you know meet the requirements that our customers are facing. Next slide, please. So this is sort of like the uh, uh, bird's eye view of the solution that we're providing to our uh, customer. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, we have a data as a service layer um, and Dremio is at the center of that. Uh, Dremio connects to different data sources, including um, Azure Data Lake Gen 2, uh, NoSQL databases such as uh, MongoDB, relational database, um, SQL Server, uh, Redshift, Oracle, you name it. Um, and then what it does is that it provides a virtual data set, which uh, I'll get into uh, soon. And on top of Dremio, we run uh, data analytics uh, visualization, and we do heavy data modeling utilizing Looker, which is a very uh, unique tool uh, that's been uh, very instrumental to us. And you know, once we have done the data uh, exploration, utilizing data as a service layer, uh, which is there to provide uh, the data agility so that uh, business analysts and then data analysts, they can come together, uh, they can explore data from different data sources, uh, and then come up with a uh, good business uh, value and business proposition um, that they can use to serve uh, the beneficiaries. And once that's done, uh, we sort of uh, productionize it and then create a BI analytics uh, layer utilizing Snowflake and again, uh, ADLS Gen 2. Uh, and we're running uh, Databricks and Looker as our analytical layer on top of it. Next slide, please. So this is just the uh, uh, same um, graphic that we saw before. I don't think I need to cover this uh, in detail. Next slide, please. So, uh, Dremio, you know, has very unique concept called a uh, virtual data set. Uh, and what it means is that um, underlying data sources, they are immutable physical data sets. And based on, on those physical data set, you can layer different uh, stack of tra uh, data transformations to come up with a virtual data set. And each virtual data set is ultimately uh, described utilizing a you know, SQL query, uh, SQL language, which is very popular uh, language. Um, and you know, if chaining of data sets, uh, virtual data sets are possible so that you can build on different virtual data sets on top of other virtual data sets. And it provides uh, data lineage so that you can see where the data comes from, what kind of transformation has taken place. And in addition, uh, Dremio provides a data catalog and curation capability uh, so that uh, you know, it provides a centralized view of where, what kind of data is available and then providing uh, the collabor collaborative uh, tool set so that uh, you know, different uh, you know, members from different organizations, uh, different uh, technical background can collaborate with each other. 
uh, on those data sets. Next slide, please. So this is an example of uh, creating a virtual data set. Um, as you can see, it's pure SQL. Um, and if you look at the query, uh, what I'm doing is I'm joining uh, data that is living in uh, ADLS Gen 2 or Data Lake uh, as a CSV file. And I'm joining the data, patient information data with allergies data that's in JSON format. So, uh, you know, there is no ETL that's necessary to have that data available. Only thing you need to do is just drop the data set, uh, data files into a data lake, and then you make connection into uh, data lake utilizing Dremio, and then you start querying utilizing SQL, which is very powerful concept. Next slide, please. And um, you know, since we are using SQL, everything is simple. Uh, like I mentioned, you can join data from multiple data sources, including JSON, CSV, Parquet, and relational database and NoSQL. Uh, you can aggregate data from different data sources and then uh, create virtual data set on top of that. Next slide, please. Yeah, um, so I think I touched up on this. Um, there is no need for me to touch this again. Uh, skip to the next slide, please. And, uh, you know, what we're excited about in Dremio is it provides security. Um, so within, um, you know, by utilizing SQL and some uh, functions that Dremio provides, what we can do is, since we're uh, working with health uh, care data, security is number one concern. And, uh, you know, while we're providing security, we don't want to uh, minimize the agility of uh, providing, uh, you know, data agility. So, uh, you know, we want to uh, leverage tools like Dremio to create a virtual data set, pulling data from different data sources so that uh, we can run other tools on top of Dremio, such as uh, Apache Spark, uh, you know, Databricks. Uh, we can even um, do exploration using SAS and other type of, uh, you know, analytical tool uh, using, you know, GDBC and GDBC connection. So uh, when we do that, we don't want to necessarily give uh, sensitive information out to data scientists or uh, business analysts who may be looking for the data, you know, we can uh, do some data masking using Dremio's virtual data set uh, technology so that we're only giving information that's necessary to carry out those analytical uh, workloads. So uh, these are two uh, uh, functions that Dremio provides. Query user and is member are functions that, you know, we have leveraged. Um, you know, these functions should not be uh, unfamiliar, um, you know, transact SQL uh, from SQL Server and then MySQL also provide similar capabilities. Uh, can you move on to the next slide? Um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but you know, this is type of uh, transformation that we can do. For example, if uh, the, uh, the person who is uh, working with this uh, work, I mean, who's logged in is, has a, a user ID of super duper user, and if the if he's in a privileged user group, then you know the person can see social security number. By the way, this this is a synthetic data, so uh, this is these are not real data sets. Uh, and then uh, if a person is does not belong to privileged privileged user or is not uh, uh, you know uh, does not have the user ID of super duper user, then what they see is they see a mass data, uh, as you can see in the in the screen. Next slide, please. And this is just, uh, you know, a further uh, view of um, how to create virtual data sets. So, you know, once we have I didn't, uh, uh, come up with uh, the SQL query that we can use to build a virtual data set, then, you know, we can create a virtual data set using the SQL query. And that virtual data set is given to uh, you know other members of the organization, such as a business analyst and uh, data scientist. And as you can imagine, uh, they don't have access to uh, uh, secure and sensitive information. Those are masked when they query uh, the virtual data set. And I can get into. I'm going to get into this uh, further when I do the live demo in a few minutes. Next slide, please. 
And as I mentioned before, um, Dremio provides um, uh, data creation and data catalog capability, which is very useful uh, to provide that 360 view of the data that an organization has. And um, you know, it provides uh, you know tools such as you know wiki and tagging capability, so that uh, you know different people from different organizations can collaborate with each other on that particular uh, data set. Next slide, please. And data lineage. Um, um, so uh, this screen is pretty interesting because, as you can see, uh, the left hand side is the source of the data, right? That's the physical data set that's out in uh, Azure Data Lake. And from that, what we're doing is we're converting the physical data set into a virtual data set. Uh, and we're doing transformation on top of the virtual data sets from two different files. One was a CSV and the other is JSON. And what you see in the middle in that a blue, a blue uh, box area is the virtual data set that we have created. And it doesn't stop there. You can also, do for, you can also create a, a, a other virtual data set from that central data set uh, by uh, doing some transformation using SQL. So as you can see, you know, this prevents uh, a scenario where there is a data perforation. You know, if you need, I mean, you know, some of the organization, what they do is, if they wanna give out um, non-sensitive information for um, analytical uh, uh, data scientists or you know, other analytical work to take place, they need to do a lot of copying of the data, which creates a scenario where uh, you know, it's kind of hard to manage and then you sort of you know, lose uh, the, the data governance and then different copies are passed around and you don't even know the quality of the data at that point. So it quickly becomes a uh, data swamp. But, you know, since we are keeping the physical data set immutable and then just doing a uh, transformation on top of the physical data set by creating virtual data sets, the data is uh, very uh, much governable. And then you can add a different type of security, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, transformations on top of those uh, to provide the data sets that are necessary for uh, different analytical work. So, you know, managing the data becomes very easy uh, using such tool. Next slide, please. And I, you know, as I told you before, you can do, you can run uh, different analytical uh, tools such as um, Apache Spark on top of it. You can build uh, machine learning models uh, and do further data engineering on top of it. So this is just showing you how uh, it can be done. Uh, just, you know, adding, Dremio JDBC driver into the Databricks environment and then being able to have connection to, uh, uh, you know, to the data set from uh, Apache Spark is uh, pretty valuable. Next slide deck. And just a little more configuration there. So uh, I think that's the end of my presentation. Um, Rob, do we have uh, time for a demo? Absolutely, we do. Yes, and so let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll uh, we'll stop sharing and let you let you drive. Sure. Okay. Um, so, um, can you see my screen? We can. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, you know, I'm logged into Dremio as uh, two different users. I'm just refreshing the screen just to make sure that uh, my session hasn't timed out. Um, on the left-hand side, I've logged in as uh, a privileged user, which is me, Dong Wah Kim. And then on the right-hand side, I'm logged in as non-privileged user. As you can see, uh, you know, I have connectivity into uh, this, uh, data source, which is uh, ADS Gen 2. Um, so if I can go to my uh, Azure Blob Storage Explorer, uh, this is what I'm connected to. Uh, and as you can see, I have uploaded uh, different uh, synthetic data sets um, uh, that are healthcare related. And those are reflected on the screen here. So a non-privileged, Privileged user does not have same access. So what I'm going to do is, 
I'm going to create a, a virtual data set so that non-privileged user can have access to only data set, uh, only um, data sources they you know should be able to see. And I can do that by creating a virtual data set. <clears throat> so let me just copy and paste the query. So I do new query, and then I'm just going to copy and paste. And I, I think we covered this earlier within um, the slide deck. So I'm using query user uh, if it's Tongwa uh, Kim or if uh, the user is in uh, private user group, then I'm going to be displaying social security number. Otherwise, I'm going to be masking it. Uh, same thing with uh, the first name and then the last name. So I'm just gonna run this query, excuse me. And new virtual data set is created. So when I come back here, there is my new virtual data set. I click on it. Since I am logged in as a privileged user, I'm able to see the social security number uh, and then first name and so on. Um, by the way, this is synthetic data, so uh, there is no uh, sensitive information here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at um, the graph um, to see uh, uh, the data lineage. So as you can see, uh, the source of the data comes from ADLS Gen 2, and then I created a data set out of it, and then I have applied the transformation so that now I have a virtual data set that includes uh, some of the fields from uh, the original data source, which is a CSV file. Um, and then, you know, I have a selected uh, uh, number of rows from that. I come here. And then I have given um, access to the data set, uh, virtual data set. So even non-privileged user has access to the virtual data set that I just created. Uh, when I click on the data set, this time what I see is, uh, as you can see, the social security uh, number field is a uh, masked. Uh, so are the first name and last name fields, uh, they are hashed. So uh, user does not have access to uh, underlying data. And our look into uh, ADLS uh, account so that uh, we are sure that there is no other physical data set that are created. So I think, um, you know, you know, I think you can, you, I mean, you know, as I mentioned before, you can also do, also create further uh, different virtual data sets on top of this data set by applying uh, different transformations. Uh, and then we can even go into the data catalog and you can start uh, adding wiki page and then start collaborating with other members of uh, different groups or within your group. So uh, that's pretty much uh, the uh, end of the demo. And one thing, on a, one, one thing that I want to point out is that I have used only one uh, data source for this demo. But as I mentioned, you can uh, mix uh, data coming from different data sources, relational database, NoSQL, and different uh, file formats such as, you know, Parquet, uh, JSON, and, and you can aggregate the data and then come up with different virtual data sets. So that's the end of my demo, Rob. Great. Yeah, Donghua, thank you so much for the uh, taking us through uh, the application and also giving the live demo. Uh, it's a really interesting application of Dremio that you have there at New Wave. Um, and really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to show it off live as well. So we have um, been receiving a number of questions uh, in the, in the Q&A section. We've also gotten a few questions that have come in on the, on the chat. And the request is, is if you, if you did submit a question on chat, if you could uh, actually repost it in the, in the Q&A area. Uh, and that'll allow us to make sure that we, uh, that we have your question and that we can follow up with you later if we don't get time to uh, answer it live here today. So just that's a kind of a quick administrative note, but if you if you did put questions in chat, if you could instead uh, post them in, in Q&A, and that way that'll, 
give us a way to uh, keep a record of it and, and make sure that we get back to you with an answer. So, um, so yeah, this has been a, a really great overview of both uh, ADLS uh, Gen 2 by Jeff and uh, also uh, the new wave uh, application by Donghua and wanted to actually get to some of these questions. Um, there are a number of them that are for, uh, for Dremio or are really related to Dremio features and functionality. There's some questions that have come in uh, for Donghua and Jeff as well. And what I'd like to do is kind of pull one from each, um, from each of those categories and uh, take a few minutes to address them and, uh, and then see how many more questions we have time to get to today. So uh, we did have a question come in um, for, uh, for Donghua that, that really, the, the, the question is, um, can, you, can you really relate to us the experience uh, that you've had uh, as an ISV uh, you know, working with uh, with Microsoft and ADLS and as well as Dremio, can you just kind of recount your experience there? Uh, how how these platforms and technologies have been to work with uh, from your position as uh, a systems integrator ISV? Yeah, sure. Um, so you know, we uh, New Wave we're in a very very unique uh, position uh, to providing service to our federal. Uh, government uh, customers, but we're also in the healthcare space, meaning that, you know, we get to play with a lot of different data sources, different data sets, uh, different types of data. And, you know, at the same time, as I mentioned, we need to provide the security um, and, you know, robust governance so that, uh, you know, we're protecting uh, information of uh, different beneficiaries. So, uh, and also at the same time, we need to provide uh, the agility of being able to explore different data sets um, so that we can come up with, for example, a uh, machine learning model that can predict um, some health uh, episodes and you know, how we can improve the delivery of the healthcare. Uh, that requires a lot of uh, exploration and quick turnaround. And we cannot rely on traditional method of doing ETL because, you know, as you know, ETL takes a lot of time and, you know, Traditionally, there is a separate organization that's just dedicated to, to doing ETL, and it can take months and weeks before the data set is available. But, but you know, leveraging tools like Dremio and uh, ADLS Gen 2, they allow us to pull data from different data sources, uh, just, you know, uh, have them uh, stored in um, ADLS Gen 2, pull the data, uh, you know, without going through that whole ETL process, and be able to gain insights from the data uh, that uh, information that's contained within the data set. So um, it's been pretty exciting. Um, our customers are happy that you know we have this kind of capability where they can see what kind of information is available, what kind of uh, data sources they have, um, and then be able to sort of uh, you know provide a more of a you know business value uh, for serving um, the, the citizens of. Uh, of the states. Great. Yeah, thank you, Don Juan, for that really detailed answer. We, we've got another question here that has come in and uh, it was on the chat channel. And I think that, uh, that Jeff did some, some reply via chat, but we want to pose this question out so that everyone can, can hear it and, uh, and kind of hear some of, some of his answer. I think it would be really beneficial for the group. Uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll pose this question, and if you could take like a you know a minute and a half and and uh, just give a kind of a shortened version of 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 the answer to this. I know it's a big topic, uh, but the question is, what is rich data management and governance for you, and how does it relate to a data lake? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Robert. Um, you're right. It is it is a big topic. Um, let me let me see if I can get to and infer a whole lot of things uh, from where. I guess where, where Lucas's question is coming from. Um, rich data management means, you know, like it, it understands uh, you, you can manage the data in, it, in its sort of physical and presence in terms of, okay, it's a block and bits and bytes, uh, you know, on, a, on, a, on some sort of storage substrate and, you know, we need to make sure it's resilient and secure and all those things. So they're, you know, managing the data for the sake of data. And then there's also managing the data in the context that the data really provides value to the business, right? So really kind of like opening it up and actually saying, all right, what, the, what does all this data actually mean and, and how do I 
how do I manage the meaning and ensure that that meaning is is um, is is kept uh, in in alignment with the uh, with the organization. Now, data governance in the sense of sort of the the Azure you know sort of an Azure land. Um, you know, ADLS Gen two we provide a lot of the foundational um, capabilities of that all of the data governance solutions provide. Um, uh, you know, rely on, you know, the file system, uh, granular uh, ACLs uh, on, on the uh, files and folders, um, the ability to uh, tag and, and auto tier the data, you know, from say a cool, hot, archived tier, uh, you know, throughout the life cycle, right? Uh, you, a good data governance uh, tool, uh, whether it's first party or third party, should be able to take advantage of those native capabilities provided by the underlying data lake store. Um, you know, tags, uh, tags should be able to have GDPR, um, uh, you know, nomenclature and support for that. Um, you know, all of the data lineage uh, and scanning and profiling, you know, all that stuff that's in data governance, uh, you know, any solution worth its salt needs to be able to provide those capabilities at, a, at, at cloud scale and, and you know, cloud economy great yeah thank you Jeff that was yeah. uh, that was actually for such a big topic very very succinct so I appreciate that answer and, um, and sh shameless Microsoft plug uh, these manifest and Azure data catalog uh, and just generally the whole Azure data governance story all up and for anyone that's keeping um, uh, kept, kept up to date with some of the latest acquisitions that we've made, uh, Blue Talon should be top of mind. Uh, highly encourage everyone to look up Blue Talon, uh, but we're really excited that they are part of the Microsoft family. And uh, matter of fact, I've been meeting with them for the last week or so on, on, on getting some nuanced Blue Talon love for ADLS Gen 2. But of course it won't be Blue Talon, it'll be you know, part of Azure Governance. All right, that's it, shutting up now. <laughs> Thanks Jeff, really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, um, so a few questions, actually quite a number, and we're not going to be able to get to them all, unfortunately, but we will uh, keep in mind, uh, if we don't get to your question today, uh, your Dremio question, we will absolutely have somebody follow up and uh, get you those answers. So um, looks like I've probably only got time for maybe two or three of these, given, the, um, given where we are in the schedule. So uh, the, the first one that, that came in, um, yeah, the first one that came in actually was um, someone asked, could, could we elaborate on the difference between Dremio and a data, data virtualization product, right? And there are other data virtualization products out there. We don't think of Dremio as, as just data virtualization. Um, so we do data virtualization. So that is a component of, of what we at Dremio offer. Um, but that's just a piece. And so really the entire offering of Dremio is uh, we, we do allow you to connect to various backend data sources uh, and actually query those virtually as though they were all effectively part of a virtual data warehouse. That's, that's one of the features. Uh, but what we also offer is acceleration. Uh, and we can talk in great detail about acceleration. And there have been a few questions asked about that as well. Um, and we'll get into those in just a moment. But, but we offer also um, numerous ways of accelerating um, you know, user workloads on the platform. Uh, we also offer uh, data catalog and data lineage, um, which, are, which are features that, that really are not traditionally part of um, many strict data virtualization solutions. Uh, and we also give um, a, a, an environment Right, which you saw in the in the the demo by Dong Hua, um, a way to come in and actually build out uh, entire virtual semantic layers and you know layer on top uh, security and masking and and you know row and column level permissioning uh, some of the things that that weren't um, actually shown explicitly in the demo as well is that you can come in for each of the objects at each of the various layers. Uh, you can actually set view and edit permissions as well, not just row and column, but, but uh, as you build out your semantic layer in Dremio, you can control permissions uh, at a number of layers. So it's really a, a, an offering that covers a lot of territory, uh, Dremio, and it, and it isn't just data virtualization, although that is a component. Um, there was another question that came in um, 
that asked, is, is Dremio in the cloud or is it on-prem? And uh, the answer is, is really, really either or both. We, we have customers that exclusively use Dremio in the cloud. Um, and you know, one notable one we have uh, is using, um, basically the entire platform is in Azure. So all of their, all of their data lands in uh, an ADLS data lake. Uh, customer is, is actually um, uh, RCCL, which was on our, our title slide. And they have deployed uh, the entire Dremio cluster in VMs in Azure, and they're, they're querying the data lake directly. So that's a, a complete cloud deployment. Uh, we also uh, feature for, for those who don't want to do, um, you know, installs on VMs, we have uh, the ability to deploy in Kubernetes in cloud environments uh, pointed at, at uh, cloud data storage. So, um, so very strong cloud story. Uh, we will also be um, coming forth um, in the future with a, um, a service offering as well. So our cloud story is very strong. We're very heavily focused on, on cloud and, and heavily focused on, uh, on service. And yet we also have many very, very, very large customers who are on-prem. So the financial customers that we work with, um, you know, we've got uh, customers that are very large enterprises that have large Hadoop deployments, uh, data lakes that are on Hadoop, uh, some clusters that are running into the, you know, the four, five, 600 node cluster uh, range uh, in Hadoop. And we're deployed um, on-prem there, typically in a, um, in a yarn queue running on top of Hadoop. So there's many ways that you can deploy the platform. Um, and, and cloud is a, is a very uh, common way and, and a place that we're really focused. And we also have a number of very large enterprises that, that deploy uh, on-prem. So um, I think we've got uh, one more question I think that we can take. And I think that we'll, we'll basically close with this uh, with this last one, which was, does Dremio provide uh, APIs for creating connections and virtual data sets? And uh, we do. And in fact, we have um, a, a robust REST API that will allow you uh, to do basically all the things that you can do in the UI uh, with Dremio, which are things like, um, you know, creating virtual data sets, you can, um, Create accelerations. You can, um, you know, work with the uh, the metadata catalog. So we have pretty much uh, all of our big enterprise customers uh, will will typically have some some level of integration. And this is something that we do here in the professional services team uh, at Dremio is that we help our large enterprise customers really integrate Dremio well into, um, you know, their their various systems. So it could be everything from, um, you know, hooking in Dremio to the end of an ETL process to maybe, you know, create some virtual data sets automatically. It could be uh, integrating with APIs to do, um, you know, monitoring. So there's a, there's a whole host of things that we use the API for in, in larger deployments. So, um, so with that, I think that that's all we have time for today. Uh, I want to thank our, our two presenters, uh, Dongwa Kim, and, and Jeff King. And uh, thank you guys very much for, uh, for all the content that you've shared and the questions you've answered. Uh, and I wanna thank everybody for taking their time today to come and, and be a part of this webinar with us. It's, uh, it's really a, an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to be able to, to talk about um, Dremio and, and our great partners uh, on a call like this. So, so thank you all for your time and attention today. And, um, I think with that we'll um, we'll close. And just keep in mind that if you did post questions in the uh, in the Q and A, that we will be sure to to follow up with uh, with answers to those. So, thank you everyone. Have a great rest of the day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on another one of these events soon.